course, this is Felicia. Just came out of a great win uh, at uh, UFC Oklahoma State. Sorry, we're laughing because, as most of you know, we we don't start taping right away, and we always Felicia and I have the weirdest conversations beforehand before we get in here. I it's, know. Actually- it's great. He called me like he called me. He's like, "You ready to go?" I'm like, "Yeah." Like then the internet like stopped working. He calls me back like five, <laughs> five times. He calls me back, and I'm like, "Gosh, crazy ex boyfriend, psycho stalker." <laughs> 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 I screw up my internet on purpose whenever I work with Felice so that way I have to call her back a hundred times and that way I don't get sued for stalking it, it's just how it works yeah. he's like, I'm like I don't know if it's my internet or yours he's like it's mine always blame me I'm like I do 100% like, <laughs> I will never take fault <laughs> well uh, you look great um, coming out of a fight no no broken bones at least on your face uh, I, I saw a post me. yeah nothing right the one the one mark I have is this stupid mat burn on my knee, and it's so disappointing because that could have come anywhere. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, speaking of ex-boyfriends, how's that? Uh, no, they're um, they're uh, <laughs> anybody show Uncle Michelle? My mom's you? in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> Even better. I mean, <laughs> there uh, uh, a lot of things came out of your fight. One is. For me, it's been your two year progression because I've been watching you like really hard for two years and you had a huge amount of success um, athletically. But then for a while, you had like a little a little hiccup, like you you just weren't fighting right. Things just weren't going right. You went and got your levels checked. What we talked about on a on a different uh, a different sh- uh, interview. Yeah. Now it seems like everything's kind of firing on all cylinders. Is it uh, is it just getting your chemicals balanced is, is all the real difference that you needed? I mean, it appears to be so. It, I, I don't know if it's just that. Um, I think that um, I was doing so many things wrong for so many years, and I was stubborn, and I had a lot of eating disorders, and I was, I, and because of that, I was, you know, I thought the only way to make weight was by starving myself. So even like after I would weigh in, I wasn't thinking about like rehydrating, recarbo loading. I was like, oh. I've been eating such little amounts before, like, my fight, you know, this whole camp. I don't want to eat too much and, like, shock my body and and, and right. um, feel heavy in the fight. So I would eat very little after weigh-ins, too. So I think that um, hitting rock bottom and having a horrible performance to where I physically couldn't move um, and then getting my levels checked, I think it's just it's a combination of everything it's about releasing um letting go of my old superstitions my old you know habits ways of doing things that were unhealthy and finding a way to come back be balanced and um do things the right way the healthy way the you know from an athletic standpoint of hey i'm gonna rehydrate i'm gonna rehydrate i'm gonna refuel i'm gonna eat for energy now i eat for energy and i eat a shit ton more than i used to yeah, I mean, uh, Jill and I follow all your social networks, and and it's actually pretty, it's actually inspiring to other female athletes out there because we we and this is the reason why we've talked about this before. Like, I hate women's MMA. I don't like women's MMA. It's not that I don't like women competitors. I don't like the way the media portrays women. If you're not if you're not super hot and super in shape, then you're not really going to be that that great of a champion. And that's all that's all BS. It's it's complete bullshit. Because now yeah. as a ref, when I go out there and I ref. I don't look at you as a female and male. I look at you as a competitor. I got all the rules the same. There's no difference, male or female. It's all the damn same. So I have to figure it out. Are you in danger? Are you? Is the fight over? Are you winning or you not? Like the whole game gets played. Media doesn't do that yet. And so as a result, you putting out there, hey, this is how much I eat, but still look what my body is doing while I'm eating this much, is inspirational to other female athletes that are coming up. Is that something that's in the back of your head? You're like, hey, I'm inspiring other athletes that are coming through, or is that just a, a side effect of what you try to do for yourself? Um, you broke up a little bit, um, so I'm going to piece together what I okay. think you said. Uh, I'll maybe just repeat it. There, uh, uh, you are super inspiring to a lot of these other women because of the way you eat now. Is that something that in the back of your head you're like, I want to be, I want to be a role model. I really want to embrace that role, or is that just a side effect of the fact that you're doing so much better as a result? Everybody else sees that you're doing so much better. What we do for ourselves, but it's nice to have the the trickle effect. Um, and I and I obviously am very vocal, and I do post things because I do realize, you know, especially over the years, um, how much you know when you're in the public eye, you know that people look up to you and they're watching you and they're following every move. So I do like to show women, hey, like you don't 
Like, you don't have to starve yourself. You don't have to be, uh, ah, shoot, the connection. The it's connection all right. keeps going off. Um, yeah. Like I said, it is a trickle effect, but I keep that in mind, like, when I post, um, because I know that, that people are watching. And I don't want, I really don't want other women to have to go through what I, what I went through. I don't want women to think that they have to have eating disorders. And, and also, like, I, I eat you know, as much as I do and I, and I eat for energy and I do look the way that I do. So it's actually, I look better now mm-hmm. that I, I don't deprive myself than I, than I do when I did deprive myself. But again, like it's because I actually stopped focusing on the aesthetics of it and the weight, the number and started eating for energy and for my sport. Like, Hey, I burn a lot of calories doing what I do. So I need to put in a lot of calories so that I have energy to keep doing what I do. And um, I hope that I inspire women, and I hope that women are watching and they're uh, and and they're they're taking note. You know, um, you, you you lead by example. You know, I'm doing what I do, but because I'm in the public eye, I know that people are watching. Now you said afterwards after your fight that you feel like you're being disrespected a little bit by the UFC. Um, can you explain that a little bit? How, how do you feel like you're being disrespected? Well, you know, if you take a look at my last few fights, like this this last fight, obviously it was obvious that it was going to be a high profile, like a really great fight. It was right before the co-main event. But it got zero publicity, zero marketing whatsoever. And the funny thing is before it was like, oh, when I was fighting these hot girl fights, they got all the marketing, all the publicity, all the promotion. But yet, it wasn't me they were marketing, and it wasn't the fight they were marketing. They were marketing my opponent. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I've been a stepping stone. You know, like when I fought Kylan Fun, it's frustrating because she was on a two fight. She she had lost, She was one and two in the UFC, and yeah. renegotiated her contract. She got paid the same amount of me as me to lose that fight as I did to win that fight. Okay, so that's number one. Yeah. And number two, all the marketing, all the promotion was like the highlights and stuff were all of her looking like this beat and like showing me like mentally weak because I had, you know, the last performance, right. you know, the performance that I did before that and was trying to come back and, um, you know, work on myself. But it, it, they, they, it portrayed me in a sense that was like, like I was going, I was favored to lose. Mm-hmm. And I come back and I, and I beat her in a dominating session. I thought maybe the tides would turn a little bit. No. Then I fight Alexis Rasko. They're trying to tap into this Mexican market. Yeah. And, you know, they're flying her out to do all these, like, mainstream things. Like, she's going to all these, like, these, you know, like, the, all these games, you know, these games and just doing, um, you know, like, 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 sports games, sports events, like, doing all this mainstream stuff. Here, they're, market, like, they're marketing the fight because... They're marketing her, and I'm yeah. stepping stone for her to lose. We're co-main event. I have zero love, zero attention. You know what? You, you want me to do these small rinky, like small rinky dink interviews? Um, and then I beat her, and I thought maybe the tides would turn again. And no, I'm I'm trying. The yeah. UFC is not even flying me out to UFC to fight with international fight week. If I want to go to international fight week, I'm going to go on my own dime. And that is sad because I'm on a three fight win streak. And you know what? My last two fights have been against undefeated girls. Yeah. Pop, like, good ass <coughs> girls. And it's not just me. I'm not just speaking on my behalf. I'm speaking on behalf of so many fighters here this week. So many fighters. You have, like, a stage north cut that comes out. What? He does a backflip <laughs> after one fight and he's getting paid all this money for what? You, and meanwhile, you have Max Holloway, who who went on like an eleven fight win streak, yeah. and is still trying to get love. He was yeah. dominated, cleaned house, finished top ten prospects, not not getting love, not getting attention. And I'm not speaking just on my behalf. I'm speaking out for all the UFC fighters who feel the same way that I do, and so many of them feel the same way I do. If we could get the if. if there's so many people, if they were given the chance to shine, they would. But they don't have the, the the business behind them. You know, they don't have the, 
you know, the, the machine behind them. And yeah. it's, it's a shame. It's it's really a shame, you know. They're uh, they want to get behind it, the flashes in the pan. It, it's interesting to hear you talk about how you feel like you're disrespected. We talk to most fighters. They're like, I'm not making enough money is the first thing that comes out of their mouth. The first thing that comes out of your mouth, they're not marketing me enough. Like, I, I'm doing everything I can do, but I'm not getting marketed. That one time, that entire, I think it was four and a half minutes that you talked, there was not one mention of cash. Not one mention. And that's an interesting take that, that most fighters are not taking right now. The first thing they say is, hey, you pay me more. I'll feel respect if you give me more money. But all you're saying is, if I'm going to fight, make me make me part of the part of the program. If you're the you're you're technically in a slot that you fought this uh, last weekend was what's called, considered a swing bout. In the very beginning, uh, this is for the folks at home. Very beginning of pay per view days. This would be the one fight that might have made pay per view and might not have made pay per view because of the way the timing that was worked out. Now the UFC because it's so good, all the fights get in there. But you have the main event, the co main event, and then the swing bout is the is technically the fight before that. That's where Felice fought this last weekend. It's a huge spot. It's a big slot. It's the fight that's going to warm you up to get ready for, oh, crap, this is what the whole card is about. Obviously, we saw that with, with Boach and, and Hendricks, and then with the controversy with uh, uh, Kiesa and Lee. So you're looking at, Felice is talking about a legit gripe. It's a legit problem. If you're in these top three spots, hell, if you're in the, in the main event, the top five spots, why are they not promoting you? Why are you not being flown out these big things? You live in Chicago. If I remember correctly, the Chicago Cubs won the World Series last year. You're right down the street from there. Why wouldn't you be throwing out the first pitch at one of the games? Even if it's just a pre a, a preseason game, they should have you out there doing stuff. And I've asked to go to sports events. I've asked to be more on board. I've asked to do these things. And I'm told that, yeah, yeah, we'll get on it. And nobody's ever gotten on it. And it's sad because it's like, I get it. I've shied away from the media during fight camp. Yeah. Just during fight camp. And you know why? Because it takes away from the fight. It takes away from me being able to go out there and do my job and to go and win fights, which I've shown that I've just done. My last three performances, how many women in the straw? I get it. It's not like a huge deal to win three fights in a row. But in the strawweight division, it actually is. Yeah. And all my three last performances have been dominating. Dominating women. Yeah. You know, like girls, and I've been the underdog every single mm-hmm. time. And, um, yeah, I've asked to do so much. And it's like, I don't think it's a lot to ask. It's like, you know, the youth, it's like, they don't see that. They don't see how good I am with them. There's a reason that I have sponsors that I've been with for seven years. And yeah. I go to all their, all these events and all these promotions and all these autograph signings. And I'm good with them. And I'm not given, I feel like I'm not given the opportunity to shine. And you know what? It's not even just me. So many fighters have if they were just given the opportunity to shine, they would, you know? And there's so many fighters who just paid their dues and, and just need a little recognition and a little bit of push. And for me, it's not even about the money because the money comes when, you know, if you're being put on these mainstream things, it's like people, like the media, people are not to be rude, but people are kind of idiots. They believe whatever they see. If they, it's all about brand recognition. They see you. They see you here, there, there, there. Mainstream. They're just they 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 believe it. Like yeah. you're amazing. You're an amazing fighter. You know. And there's there's a reason that there's fighters that have been pushed, and I don't know why certain fighters are being pushed more than others. And people think they're amazing, and it's like, but they're really not that amazing. They're yeah. just another you. They're just another UFC fighter. I have that argument actually quite often, um, especially with. Uh, uh, couple of fights are coming up of how good this guy is or this girl is versus this guy or this girl and you're like i don't know what you're paying attention to but this is not a good fight like it's it's, it's a it's a fight made because because the fans think they want to see it but when the fight actually happens it's going to be garbage and this is just what's going <laughs> to happen and you watch these fights and the fans are like oh this fight's gonna be great this fight's gonna be great and you talk to them 30 seconds after the fight is over so what do you think of the fight well man that fight really sucked it was really like well yes because one of the guys sucked and the other guy was mediocre, but you guys think both these guys are great. That's not how it works. It's just not the game. Play. It, it's, it is a little bit frustrating trying to talk to all the new fans. But it is a result, too, that that part of it is getting yourself out there. And, you, and like you said, you do a great job talking with fans outside of camp. Once you start training camp, you kind of go on a media blackout. And I feel like the UFC is, is um, uh, punishing you. For, for I'm not doing that much media. I'm only doing the mainstream ones. I'm doing the ones I absolutely have to. 
And that's all I'm doing during fight camp. And that's just how I, how I do my fights. During fight camp, I don't do that, much, that many interviews. And that's just how I am. Right after, before training camp, like right when you make the announcement of the fight, I'll do a bunch that week. And then I'm done until, until the day after the fight. That's just how it is. But at the same time, I might do a little more if I was offered ones that were going to benefit me as, not, I don't want to say as, like, benefit my brand. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not going to do the ones that are, I'm not going to do stuff that's going to tax my body and cause stress and anxiety and, and maybe make me lose focus on the main goal because really, like, it can't, you can't be denied. Like, the more you go and you fight and you win, you can't be denied. And I'm, I don't think it's selfish of me to make my main focus the fight. That is my main focus. And I see so many fighters that they're promoting and they're building up in between fights. Why can't I be one of them? I'm getting, right. I'm going to have to do nothing. And it's weird because I have a really huge following. Yeah. And I'm yeah. really good with fans. And so I really don't understand it. It is a little strange. But uh, I want to shift topics for a second. Well, depending on how long you want to talk about it. Um, Kitch comes out after the fight's over. You know, they obviously discover that uh, she lost control during the fight. Did you I notice knew it? Was going there. <laughs> did you did you did you notice it during the fight, or did you not even notice it? Because I watched the fight live. Now, mind you, I'm at home on my couch with a scotch in my hand watching this fight. I'm not paying complete attention to it, so I right. completely missed it. They brought it up later. I didn't see it to the next day when people started making a note. You know, uh, all the internet started blowing up with it, making a note about it. Otherwise, I would have totally missed the whole thing. Did you notice it during the fight? Um, this is a hard topic for me to talk about because okay. if it was me, yeah. I would be super embarrassed and I would want to crawl under a rock. And okay. I, would hope that people I didn't, would not- I was not going to talk about it, but then I saw Kitch's response to it and she's like, Hey, shit happens. Like, I'm yeah. sorry. This is what happened. I'm like, oh, okay. So she's okay with it. So I can talk to Felice about it. But believe well, me, if the roles reversed, sport. I wouldn't have brought it up. Yeah. No, she's a great sport. And, um. She's making light of the the situation, but at the same time, how much like you? I would still it, it, it's still like there's no way that in her mind she's not like devastated about yeah. it. And um, I didn't like you know when you're in the fight, you're in the zone, yeah, and you don't know what's up, what's going on. I didn't really know until um after the fight was over. Okay, fair you enough. Know, yeah. And that's, and so just from a technical standpoint, if, uh, and the referee missed it as well. So just so everybody understands at home, the referee didn't notice it happened either. Cause if the referee did notice that it happened, the fight is over. If you cannot control your body in, in that fashion, whether it's, whether it's coming out of your mouth or coming out of your butt, fight is done. So the fight would have been finished at that point anyway. If, if the referee had noticed it. So it yeah. was, it was so, it was so, um, uh, uh, because of everyone's got HD at home and they've got, Zoom capabilities on our TVs now, they're able to find stuff that no one else sees, even in the fight. So I think that that's the the thing that people don't realize is that um that that's something that legit like happens. Like yeah. and Justine is so tough. Like she mm-hmm. she even said before in previous interviews that like her favorite her favorite submission is not tapping out. I mean, it's kind of dumb if you really think about it, but at the same time she is so rel- she is so tough that like she will let somebody like make her go out cold before yeah. she kept. And she pretty much did because I, I think for a second, she, I mean, she had to be out even yeah. afterwards. The, um, the ref talked to me. He's like, she was like blue and purple. And I'm thinking, well, why did you stop the fight? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, it's like, it's, it's good. It's kind of good to have that because fighters are out there and we want to fight. And yeah. We want to fight to the end. We want to, fight to the death we want to make it to where i am i'm no matter what i'm going to fight i'm gonna fight it out and she did and it sucks because i really wanted the submission okay? yeah really right wanted. yeah but she was a hard she was a hard girl to finish for sure yeah it was like uh two minutes she battled to get out of that thing so it was it was really difficult and she held on and, you know and then of course we saw at the end with the uh, kies and lee that that uh uh the ref stopped it too soon i mean it was the yeah. right call to be made but it just was a little bit too quick to make it happen, but you know it's right. it's just it's the fight game. It's how it's how things happen. So, 
and everything happens so quickly that it's like I get it like the refs like they're not like they're making these judgment calls and we think like oh it was too soon but at the same time they have like they really only have seconds split seconds to make judgment calls and to make decisions and sometimes it is too soon sometimes it's a little too late but at the same time you give the fighter the benefit of the doubt that they want to be in there and they want to be fighting um and i guess that's why that fight probably was stopped just a little prematurely so what's next for you not opponents i know you don't like calling out opponents you want whoever's going to be in front of you um uh what what are you going to be doing next to get to get uh uh the, the ranking moved up a little bit higher now um, you know what, um, as far as the rankings go, they actually don't really mean that a whole lot because it, it kind of goes back to like the whole lopsided promotional thing. It's like Justin Kitch was one of the toughest fighters I've ever fought. It's not going to move me up in the rankings. Maybe it's going to give me a little street cred, but she was one of the, she was a tougher fight than Grasso and Grasso yeah. was ranked and Justine wasn't. So do the rankings really matter? No, they really don't. It's a shame that like they, I keep getting... Like, I fought, I fought Grasso and beat her, and you would think I would move up in the rankings, and I didn't. And I beat Justine, who wasn't ranked, so I'm probably not going to move up in the rankings either. Yeah. Um, it is what it is. Like, I don't really... I just... I, just um, I can't... I can't... If there was a definite ranking system that was accurate and true, yeah. I, could, I, could, I could have a definite path of where I'm going from here. But okay. because it's so inconsistent and so lopsided and it's so in favoritism of who they're trying to promote and what fights they're trying to promote, I have no idea where I'm going from here. I have no idea. Okay, last thing before I let you out of here, how hard was it for you backstage not to be jumping up and down as Carla was fighting? Okay, see, <laughs> people think, they think that Oh my god, like, oh, are you happy to be fighting on the same fight card? No. No. I am absolutely not. I don't want to fight on the same fight card of, as anyone that I'm going to have an emotional attachment with because it takes away from my, like, the whole focus is, okay, we're fighters. We have to be selfish. We're supposed to be selfish because being selfish is what keeps your mind focused and mm-hmm. keeps you non-emotional. And I was sitting in the locker room, not only I was in her opponent's locker room, okay Oh So I was in her opponent's locker room and then I have and I have to watch her warm up and then I have to like be watching her backstage and I'm like and my coach, like, he's he's like police, he's like snap out, like he didn't realize it was the emotional attachment behind Carla's fight, but he's like, you look like you don't want to be here He's like, I need to snap out of this yeah, and it was because I didn't want to be there. I just had to like get past like focusing on you know I can't not watch Carla fight. It's on this big screen, this big screen in the back in the locker room, and I love Carla and she's you know my best friend. So of course I care about her well being. Of course I care if she does well. Of course you know I want her to succeed. So there's an emotional attachment no matter what. If I if I completely disregard my emotional attachment, then I'm a robot. Right. I can't yeah. do that. I'm a very passionate person. I love the people that I love. I care about the people that I care about, and, and that's that. So after she fought and after she won, that was my time to reset. Yeah. And so then I was focused on my fight. Well, at least you had five fights to get warmed up and get moving at that point. You know, I, Absolutely. I, I'm glad. Well, imagine if she was, like, right before me. I honestly would have been like turn the TV off, turn the TV off. I would, yeah. I wouldn't have watched. But now, now all you do is listen to the crowd roar from from underneath, and you're like, okay, was that a crowd roar for Carla? Or was that a crowd roar from from Morez? Like, what? Who was it roaring for? Like, now you're getting that whole other game because I've been there before too. Exactly. And it's, it's a difficult task. It is super hard, but it worked out. Everything looked great. I know. And well, she even said to me on the reverse, on the flip side, afterwards, she was like, "I'm so glad I got to fight before you." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah, you lucky bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I totally understand it. So, hey, thanks for thanks for staying by your mom's house to get this interview done. I really appreciate it. I know you want to get home and, and get yourself squared away. Um, it, it, it's it's and we still have our superstition. I will one hundred percent hit up Brian before every single fight, knowing for sure I'm gonna be denied to know I'm gonna get it right after the fight. And that's that's I'm okay with I that. It's, yeah. Do people know that like I'm super like I try to get rid of a lot of superstitions, but there's some that I'm like 
Well, I'm not going to like go against every grain in my yeah. body that I'm like, every time I've done an interview with Frank Trick, I've lost. lost. Yep. But every time I do one afterwards, I've won. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's just how we do it. And I'm, I'm okay with it. I mean, I'm just, I've accepted, I've accepted that I'm your good luck charm, but later. <laughs> yeah. I told, I told Brian and my manager, I'm like, He's, he knows it's not personal, right? He knows. Like, I love him to death, but I yeah. thought I'd do an interview before my fight with him because I'm going to lose. And it might not even be like that. I could do an interview with you before and then win, and then it, it's all flipped. But I'm yeah. not just taking that chances. Yeah. I stack the cards in my favor. <laughs> no, I'm not, hey, I'm not mad at all. You're not my lucky eight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally okay with it. I'm totally fine. I have a couple other fighters, too, the same way. That there's like, Hey man, like I had a big fight. I did one with you. I lost. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and wait till after. Okay, yeah. but I'm gonna call because that's yeah. how that's how our that's how our rhythm goes. I I, yeah. I reach out to Brian. Brian says, "Yeah, I'll ask her." He gets and I, I hit him again. Hey, does she ever respond? And then he'll, he'll like send me like a smiley face. I go, "Hey, does she ever respond?" He'll send me a smiley face, and then I won't talk to him again. And then day after the fight, he's like, "So, where are you? Are you ready to go? Like, she, she's ready to go now." I'm like, "Yep, okay, ready to go." No. Now he's going to start sending you a unicorn or the, that one. <laughs> yeah, I've got that one from him before on different stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. I believe you've gotten that one from a lot of people. Honestly. Yeah, more, more than I want to admit. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> All right, Felice, we'll talk again soon. Have a great rest of your day, man. Have, enjoy this Enjoy this this victory. It was a great job, a great fight camp. Everything showed up on, you know properly, and it's it was actually amazing to watch you fight that night. Thank you. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye, Frank. <laughs>